Well, thank you. Well, it's great to be here um, to kick off your meeting this morning. You don't have to believe everything you said in the video, though, but yeah, it's kind of nice. Actually, I'm really glad they showed the video before I speak because, number one, it proves to all of you that I used to be able to do all that stuff. <laughs> and the other reason, when they show me on this big screen, I'm so big. Because, you know, let's be honest, gymnasts get lots of comments from people who only watch gymnastics on television. So many of the events that I go to, there's always someone that's going to walk up to me and um, look down and say, wow, seen your sport before on television, but I never realized you guys are so little. <laughs> there's a reason for that. See, if you only watch gymnastics on television, think about it. What do you see on the television screen when you watch my sport? You see gymnasts, right? And judges and coaches and officials that are working the floor. So if you think about it, Everyone on the floor is either a gymnast or, yeah, an ex-gymnast. So everyone on the floor is a midget. So they really can't tell that we're just not tall until after the competition. And it's always then when an ex-NBA star who's working for CBS Sports walks up to well, his congratulations, you had a great competition. How'd you feel? <laughs> it's written in my rule book that I have to take chances. I can play it safe, I can leave out all of the risky skills, pretty much then guarantee an excellent score, and maybe even as high as a nine point, it's a great score. But as you know, there's always someone else out there that's willing to take some chances. Originality. I can't base or pattern my performances after someone else. My goal, of course, if you think about it, is to try to get to the point where everybody else is watching me. Virtuosity. If I do something on the pommel horse, the one thousandth time, with as much focus, attention to detail, and as much enthusiasm as I did the very first time, I'm going to be better than this. In 1984, these three principles, risk, originality, and virtuosity, helped Peter Vidmar lead the U.S. men's gymnastics team to its first ever Olympic gold medal. I was competing once in the World Championships over in Budapest, Hungary, about six months before the Olympics. And going into the horizontal bar final, you all know what the high bar is, right? That single little bar about nine feet above the ground. Going into the high bar finals, I was in second place, ahead of all of the then Soviet and Chinese gymnasts. One uh, great gymnast from Japan ahead of me. What got me into the finals was a risky combination of skills. And it's hard to describe, but it's one where I swing around the high bar, and I let go of the bar, and I fly straight up over the bar. Do a half turn, straddle my legs, come back down, catch the bar. I immediately let go again, do a back flip with a half turn in the pike position, come back down and catch the bar again. Trust me, it's hard. Okay. Um, I made it in the preliminary round of competition. Got a great score. In the warm-up session before the final round, where I'm supposed to go for the gold medal on high bar, all of a sudden I can't do this combination of skills successfully. Start to worry, start to panic. Went to my coach and I said, hey, and you got to help me. i got 15 minutes of the competition starts. I can't do this skill right. What is wrong here? It's my only big trick. i got to do this. Uh, let me take a look at it here. Oh, just, just pike more on your swing. Uh, arch more through the bottom next time. Try that instead. Um, let go of the bar a little bit later. All these wonderful, valid coaching tips. So I got the ultimate coaching, teaching, and leadership wisdom. We've all heard it before. But just do it right. <laughs> and for a moment, I thought, forget it. I'm not going to do it at all. I'm going to leave it out. So what? I won't get the risk points. Who cares? I can still score a 9.8 with everything else. That's a great score. That should be enough to put me on the victory stand, which was the goal in the first place. But I knew it wasn't enough to put me on top of the victory stand. See, if I left that skill out, if I scored even as high as a 9.8, I knew under those circumstances that might be enough for the bronze medal with a ton of luck with silver. But realistically, I'm not going to win the gold medal without doing that skill because other guys in the finals are taking chances. At least one of them will be successful with his big trick. He's going to end up on top. And as soon as I realized that, I thought, wait a second, this could be the only chance they ever have in my life to become a world champion at anything. And I'm going to play it safe and guarantee that I don't become one. Might as well fall off trying. Looked at my coach and said, I'm going to go for it. I said, okay, let's do it. So I really focused on what I had to do. The guy that was in first place blew it, made a mistake. All I have to do now is make this performance successfully. I'll become the world horizontal bar champion. Kind of a neat thing. So I uh, chalk up my hand, signal the superior judge. The big risk he still comes at the beginning. Swing around the high bar, let go of the bar, flew straight up over the bar half, turned, straddled my legs, came back down, 
caught the bar. I immediately let go again, did that back flip with a half turn in the pike position, came back down to catch the bar, and the bar wasn't there. <laughs> Look, I know you're not gymnasts, but you're all educated enough about my sport to know this. You're only allowed to do one dismount in each performance. So I, I missed the bar. I dropped about 12 feet to my stomach. I hit the mat, first dismount. Got back up, grabbed the bar, finished my routine. Then I reeled this mount perfectly. Big deal. I jump off the platform, walked away, grabbed my bag, left the arena. I was devastated. I blew it, choked under pressure. I uh, have failed on, on why world of sports to make it worse. <laughs> I think I placed eighth. Eighth place in the world. That's not, not too bad. There are only eight people in the competition. So I'm walking back from the arena to the hotel. I'm, I'm all alone because nobody wanted to talk to me. And about halfway there, I stopped. And I promised myself so I've been to basically went from here right down to here. Nobody heard this but me. It wasn't this great dramatic moment. But I meant it when I said it to myself. I just said, never again. I will never make that mistake again. I've got to stop taking that skill for granted. Because I train that skill like everything else I do in, in my sport. So for the next seven months leading up to the games, almost every day, I go back to that horizontal bar, work a little bit extra on that risky release move that I tried to describe to you. And fortunately for me, that event, the high bar, with those skills in the routine, was one of the events in which I ended up scoring a perfect 10 at the Olympic Games. Peter went on to capture a gold in the pommel horse competition, scoring a perfect 10. Today, Peter Bidmar is well known as a motivator who helps people around the country achieve the success they desire. So I used to have a goal. This is a very noble goal. To be the last person out of a gym at the end of each day. Which is pretty hard to do when the rest of the team has that same stupid goal. <laughs> Workouts were long. But every once in a while I could outlast those guys. I'd be in an empty gym by myself 15, 20 more minutes just to work about about that much harder. And I use 15 minutes a day as an example because it's so easy to take a small increment of time like that and blow it off as worthless. I mean, come on, Peter, give me a break. They're going to tell me that 15 minutes a day has got some major impact on my life. Please. Oh, if an athlete trains for three hours a day in a sport and chooses to train an extra 15 minutes a day, after one year, that's an extra 91 hours. So based on a three hour a day workout schedule, that's an extra month of training at the end of the year. I know that when I walked into any World Championship or World Cup, I always wish I had an extra month to get ready for that thing, but then it was always too late. Winning in business is a lot like winning in sports. You have to set yourself apart from the rest, seize opportunities, and perform ordinary skills in extraordinary ways. Using his Olympic preparation and experiences, Peter motivates others to put out the extra effort needed to win in business and life. Originality